Okay, just moments ago, Donald Trump drove by Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C., where several pro-Trump groups are about to kick off a noon rally they're calling the Million MAGA March. So far, the crowd actually looks to be quite large, but it remains to be seen how many people will actually show up and if they will actually reach a million. I want to bring in MSNBC's Ellison Barber, who is live on the ground in D.C. Ellison, tell me about what's happening there. Hey, Tiffany, I want to show you some of just the scene that is around us. You can see we just saw a group of about 15 or 20 members of the group that uh, they call themselves the Proud Boys. You may have heard their name because President Trump referenced them in the first presidential debate when he was asked to disavow white supremacy, telling that group to stand back and stand by. Earlier this week, their leader uh, tweeted that that standby order had been rescinded and that they were planning to have a march here. The one that you said is called uh, the Million MAGA March. You can see down here, look at the crowd. There are hundreds and hundreds of people here. This crowd actually stretches all the way past the building here. We're standing a little bit back because most of the people in this group uh, aren't wearing masks, so we're keeping a little bit of distance right now, but you can see them with flags, with signs gathered here. For the most part, this has been a largely peaceful protest. We did see uh, one somewhat of a confrontation between uh, counter-protesters, a small group who I believe were with Refused Fascism DC coming into the crowd here. They were quickly surrounded by pro-Trump protesters and had Kind of forced out of this area. Uh, this group here, the people we have spoken to, they say that they have come here to show their support for President Trump and to also protest the election results, which they believe are fraudulent. I asked one person who was here if there was any point, even when all the states certify the results, if they would consider it a legitimate election once we see that Biden did officially, as NBC News has already called it, win this election. Uh, and he told me that they will accept it, but not believe it. So you can see this crowd here, a large group President Trump did drive by earlier. Uh, he has tweeted that he will maybe stop by and say hello. So we'll see if he makes his way back uh, after, I believe he's golfing right now after he comes back from Virginia. But this group is growing by the minute. Uh, and we have seen some extreme far right groups already within the crowd. Uh, I met one woman who said she drove up from Florida just to be here for this event. Tiffany. All right. Thanks, Allison. Uh, don't go too far. And please stay safe and keep your distance from folks without a mask. Uh, we may come back to you. And if I don't, I'm sure my colleague Alex Witt uh, will be checking back in with you on what's happening on the ground there. Ellison Barber, thank you so much. I want to turn now to our justice correspondent for the nation, Ellie Massal and Jason Johnson, uh, MSNBC contributor, to help talk through some of this craziness. So, uh, Jason, you know, this is not far from uh, where I live in, in Washington, D.C. So looking at this crowd, yeah. uh, the reporter Ellison and mentioned uh, the Proud Boys, Enrique Tario, who considers himself the chairman of the Proud Boys. I didn't know they were so organized. Perhaps there's a board of directors we don't know about. Um, but he has been somebody who mm -hmm. has vocally uh, supported this. Uh, Fox News host Sean Hannity has certainly uh, been very vocal uh, about his support for this. And the self-described American nationalist and social media agitator Nicholas Fuentes has also been people who have uh, elevated this march and encouraged people to attend. Attend. What do you make of the size of this crowd? Because I have to be honest, I thought, you know, every time we've seen this, it's been 30 or 40 people. And this crowd actually does look pretty massive. Well, Tiffany, I'm not surprised. I mean, you know, Trump got 70 something million voters, uh, and a lot of those people are going to come out. I don't think they'll reach a million people. I mean, we were all alive when they were speculating as to whether there were a million people for the original Million Man March 25 years ago. We know that was a million people. Um, but I, I think the bigger issue is this. We have to understand, look, the Proud Boys are a terrorist organization or a terrorist sympathizing organization, depending on what your definition is. We have to understand, as we have had conversations throughout this week about well, what do we do with the 70 million? This is who they are. It is a group of people. I don't care if you're there to support Donald Trump. You have every right to do that, the outgoing president, if you voted for him. But if you're comfortable being in a crowd with a terrorist or a terrorist sympathizing organization with the Proud Boys, you are a danger to American democracy. That's what we need to understand. The Proud Boys have been directly connected to acts of violence against black people, to acts of violence against the LGBT community, to vocal threats their leaders have made online. So this group is harboring these individuals. And and that's why we need to be concerned about how these crowds may be activated, whether or not they're standing back or standing by. They're standing firm with Donald Trump, and that's a problem. And, and that is scary, and it, it punctuates the point that I was making, that I'm not so sure that we can be so confident that there will be a peaceful transition of power. Uh, I will say that 
many of the stores, uh, storefronts in D.C. are boarded up. D.C.'s uh, Director of Homeland Security, Christopher Rodriguez, said on Thursday that they were expecting a relatively small crowd. However, this crowd looks perhaps bigger than what they were expecting. Ellie, what do you make of so many people showing up to defy what has clearly been a confirmed victory by Joe Biden. These are people saying we refuse to accept the reality of what we're seeing. Yeah, well, reality doesn't care if they accept it or not, right? They lost. They're going to keep losing. Um, as, as the Big Lebowski says, the bums lost, right? And so I'm not really... I mean, I'm concerned for the reasons why Jason said, but I, I, I don't forget the fact that these people are fundamentally um, a joke. These aren't serious people. These are members of a cult. I feel a little bit like I'm Jane Goodall watching people in the mist, right? Here we see the North American MAGA bro in all of its idiot glory. Their leader has left them for greener pastures, yet still they march neatly, uh, almost mindlessly, right? I mean, Trump drove by that, that parade to go golf. His entire election um, 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 results lawsuit strategy is a grift to make money for his campaign, and these people give it to him. And so I'm just, I refuse, I refuse to let these people take my joy having defeated them um, for at least the next four years. I refuse to let them take my joy, march all they want. I hope they get frostbite. Well, I mean, let me say this this march uh, includes the Women for Trump event. Um, and and they have falsely asserted this voter fraud and that that's the reason that Donald Trump lost the election. But we're seeing record turnout um, in terms of the popular vote. Arizona has been called. North Carolina was called and Trump actually won it. Um, Arizona, much thanks to the Navajo Nation, uh, Native Americans in that state who helped deliver a decisive win to Donald Donald Trump. What will it take for such a huge crowd to accept that this is where we are as a country? And then, Jason, let me ask you, how do we proceed? How do we coexist with our fellow countrymen who are here willing to risk life and livelihood, marching in the streets without masks, uh, rejecting reality, rejecting the reality of COVID, rejecting the reality of the election? How are we expected to coexist with this crowd of people? Oh, we, we don't have to. I mean, we, we just we have to tolerate them. Look, 230,000 people dying of COVID and 9 million people being infected has not changed the fact that these people still want to support and worship a guy who said that you should drink Clorox bleach to be okay. The numbers don't matter either. Dave, Dave Weigel had a really, really funny tweet this morning. Uh, Cortez, who was part of the Trump campaign, was running through all this list of numbers as to why these aren't valid results. And, and Weigel referred to them as, you know, Steve Kunacki, right? The QAnon Kornacki of the right who's trying to figure out why these numbers don't really match. At the end of the day, okay, these people aren't connected to reality. They are only concerned with their perceived loss of symbolic power. So what I have always thought going forward is the most important thing for Joe Biden and this administration to do is treat these people like what they are. They're American citizens. They have rights, but they are not part of the mandate. They are not part of America that wants to change. And this is something I think also, Tiffany, is really, really important going forward. Given the protests that we all saw this summer over Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and, and, and George Floyd and everything else like that, it's interesting it was reported that, like, there's no violence. You know why there's often not violence at these large MAGA rallies, these super spreader summer? jams. It's because a lot of the police are in favor of some of this behavior. How many reports have we seen about police actively being hostile towards Black Lives Matter protesters, but sitting by and mm -hmm. escorting people who are part of these far right groups? So we need to treat these groups the same way that everybody is treated. If they're peaceful, fine. But if they're violent, if they're tearing things up and they're getting out of line, they should be arrested and treated the same way as everybody else if we're all equal under the law. Yeah, and let me just say the conservative provocateur who promoted the Pizzagate conspiracy theory is another supporter uh, of this march. So, you know, it's it's funny until it ain't. You know, this could certainly uh, have dangerous right. potential. So we're out of time. Uh, my colleague Alex Witt will pick it up. But thank you, Ellie Mistal and Dr. Jason Johnson for joining. Don't forget to tune in to Jason tomorrow night. That's our show for today. So more